Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My name is Daniel Stack. I'm the pastor at St. Thomas Aquinas. We're celebrating the Mass of the Day for Tuesday of the 14th week. I'm using as the opening oration for those in public office. This is a challenging time, and the readings speak of the challenges of public office. As we enter into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with, with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, they made kings in Israel, but not by my authority. They established princes, but without my approval. With their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves to their own destruction. Cast away your calf, O Samaria. My wrath is kindled against them. How long will they be unable to attain innocence in Israel? The work of an artisan, no God at all, destined for the flames, such is the calf of Samaria. When they sow the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. The stalk of grain that forms no ear can yield no flower. Even if it could, strangers would swallow it. When Ephraim made many altars to expiate sin, his altars became occasions of sin. Though I write for him my many ordinances, they are considered as a stranger's. Though they offer sacrifice, immolate flesh, and eat it, the Lord is not pleased with them. He shall still remember their guilt and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. The word of the Lord. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. Israel trusts in the Lord. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have mouths, but speak not. They have eyes, but see not. They have ears, but hear not. They have noses, but smell not. The house of Israel trust in the Lord. They have hands, but feel not. They have feet, but walk not. Their makers shall be like them, everyone that trusts in them. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. 
says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. A, demia, a demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think it is good that I don't presume that you know the cast of characters today. This fine deacon. Uh, now, Kevin, your pastor, I think, is in early Alzheimer's, and so I, your last name has gone out of my brain. Just this. Tracy. Tracy, like Dick. Absolutely. Were your relatives? I'm sure of it. Sure of it. Fine deacon. He's much older than I am, and therefore he's in semi-retirement. Um, I hope to be there soon. And then Mike Chernick. Now, that's actually an, an Irish name. It used to be O'Chernick before they left the old country. He's a deacon in training. We're looking forward to having him soon. But um, soon, you know, is not a day nor an hour. Soon is what you tell your child when the child asks, uh, am I old enough now to have a sip of champagne at the wedding? And you say, soon, soon. It's one of those words, it's very elastic, it's a lovely word. Let's talk about these readings. Um, as I read them, I'm reminded of a phrase from the prophet Micah, gets quoted often says, what does the Lord desire? That we do justice, that we love mercy, and we walk humbly with our God. Now, uh, we don't always hold that as humans. We, we tend to play a little loose with it. Uh, I think my approach to these sort of things is be reasonable, do it my way, uh, do it the way that benefits me. That's really what I want, uh, and I do not appreciate you pointing out to me that my way is not really in accordance with God's Word. I, I don't find value in that. Um, be reasonable. It wasn't long ago, the late 19th and most of the 20th century, that uh, children worked in industry, even little children. They were prized because of their size. They could do things that persons of short stature found easy to do 
and those who were fully grown not so much. In the textile industry for, in particular, they, they could climb in and around the machinery to do tasks that would be difficult for an adult to do, even though those tasks might be dangerous. Uh, it also saved having to redesign the machinery so that an adult could access what the children were able to do. The children earned almost nothing, but they made a good deal of money for the owners of the factories. Those same owners took great umbrage when those who cared more for the long-term welfare of those children opposed the practice. We're seeing a surge in the debate over slavery. Do symbols of the Confederacy honor heritage or justice or injustice? Uh, slavery was very good for the bottom line. For the owner, not so good for the slave. In one of the first events honoring black history at a parish I used to serve, St. Bernadette's in Cedartown, we had a parishioner named Odell Owens, uh, African-American graduate of Morehouse College in Atlanta. His wife told me uh, that apparently there's a saying among those who live with Morehouse men that you can always tell a Morehouse man, but you can't tell him much. Well, that wasn't my experience with Odell. I, I enjoyed him very, very much. He was a parishioner, chair of the local school board. He gave uh, his presentation on African-American history, but uh, it was a little startling to the listeners because one of the first things he mentioned is if we had noticed the variety, the very uh, rainbow variety of shades and hues of complexion in the African-American population. Now, intermarriage between African-Americans and white Americans is still relatively rare. But at this time, some 20, 25 years ago, it was very rare. And even more so as one went back further. He asked us, do you think that the variety of shades was arrived at voluntarily? Hmm. No. Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. In both readings today, we're confronted with conflict between what the population saw as appropriate or legal and what conformed to God's word. The princes of Israel were legally appointed according to civil law or custom, but not according to God's word. In today's gospel reading, Jesus heals a man, but he's criticized because he is not uh, acting according to the established religious authority. He's not one of them. These days demand that we look again at what Bishop Braxton of Belleville, Illinois calls the racial divide. Two populations that still remain remarkably ignorant of each other and have remarkably little deep contact with each other. Before we can decide what to do, we first got to see what is the reality. Then assessing the facts, we can begin to create a response that would be humble, loving, and just. In my childhood, there was a television show called Dragnet, in which a police detective and his partner regularly used uh, the expression, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. And that's really the first step of our process in healing Bishop Braxton's racial divide. What are the facts? This current unrest demands that we ferret out the facts. Jesus tells us you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. And indeed it will. If we are to be set free from the vexations of this racial divide, we must first determine what is the truth. 
what is the reality when we see what the truth is we'll be able to begin to resolve the challenges that that truth presents to us I want to particularly thank Almighty God for cell phones with cameras as they are beginning to help us to see the truth. Let us turn to our loving Father, confident that you will hear and answer the prayers which we offer in Christ's name. For our church leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide their work and give them the strength to govern wisely. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For nations throughout the world, May the Lord deliver them from the evils of war and oppression, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are suffering because of illness, physical, mental, or spiritual, may the Lord comfort them and heal their affliction, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those of us gathered here today and those gathered remotely, may the Lord encourage us in remaining faithful to our labor in the fields where he sends us. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may the Lord welcome them into the joy of his eternal presence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Father, please hear and answer these our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, which we offer from our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life, for you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that's been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Gregory our Bishop, Joel and Bernard as auxiliaries with all bishops, priests, and deacons and your entire people. As we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Thomas Aquinas and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, <clears throat> informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be, done be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. <clears throat> Look. <clears throat> Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by these, by such great gifts, may we gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>